This is a short little video on how I organize my ideas in podcasting, speeches, or writing a paper, writing a book. I don't do this all the time, but I do this when I have lots of ideas that I want to talk about or write about, and I'm having trouble organizing them. When I write, for example, I just sit in front of the keyboard or I just sit at my paper and I just go and I have the ideas in my head. I know the things I want to talk about and I kind of juggle them around and I touch on them and bounce around and I look at it like a map and I just sort of talk about it. It's my idea is like a picture to me. And I'm going to show you how to put your idea, what you want to talk about on paper as a picture. Now, this is not for everyone. This is either for speakers who want to actually talk to their audience, not just write something and then read to a bunch of people something that they could have just recorded in a podcast, but actually want to share a bunch of ideas, but talk to the people that they're talking to. And this is also for students who might struggle writing in class. You need to write a paper, but you're not sure how to organize it. Now, the dirty little secret is that they're usually one and the same. If you struggle with writing in school, it's probably because you're a good writer or speaker. School papers are not for good writers or speakers. School papers are for busy teachers. I mean, you've seen the old thing about the five paragraph essay where you have the introduction up at the top and then you have your three paragraphs in the body and then you have your conclusion. Well, that's uh, so you've got the first here and then you've got two, three and four here. And that's the basic five paragraph essay. Remember intro conclusion. And this is the body. Well, you've actually only got three paragraphs here. In a newspaper, they'd say, just do this part or a magazine. I mean, if you really want to get published in a normal periodical, like a regular magazine or a newspaper, leave out the intro and the conclusion. Intros and conclusions are for academic papers or journals or assignments. The reason we have those is so that the teacher who has to read 200, 500, 1,000 different papers can look at the introduction and know what you're going to say and then kind of breeze through it quickly to find stuff and then get to the conclusion and know what you said and help them to not get lost when they have so much work to do. The actual body is the important part. This is the way to write a paper for your school, but it is not the way to organize your ideas when you're preparing to write your paper. So, before we get started into all this, there's a few videos you should watch. One of them is called Geometric Grammar. And that's over at my PinkWrite channel. Write.pink is the web address. Mm, fix that I there. And on that YouTube channel, there's a video called Geometric Grammar, where we look at basic grammar with basic shapes. And we're going to use the same basic shape concepts here. There's another video here at my YouTube channel. It's a very special edition podcast or a, a very special edition. And that's called Political Perspectives. Uh, and how I write speeches, but, uh, just look for political perspectives, VSE, and, uh, that'll tell you, you need to go look at these two videos. If you want more geometric grammar first, and then the very special edition podcast on political perspectives. That's a good follow up because I actually use that model and I explain it while I'm going through it. If you want a demonstration. Now, I organize my ideas with the basic shapes of rectangles and ovals. And for me, usually a rectangle 
is an idea. And a circle is some sort of a practical example or a story. Now, if I need something else, I might use a triangle and I might use some lines and I might use some arrows. But the basic concept is I'm taking my ideas or they're like nouns, things that exist, static things. And I take my circles, my ovals, which are like verbs, things that actually happen, the practical, and I put them together. So, let's say I want to write a paper and I want to talk about a few ideas. I want to talk about the environment. Oh, oh, wait a minute. The environment is not an idea. The environment is a real thing. Ah, so I'm going to talk about the environment. I'm going to talk about uh, the fad approach. The fad approach, the popular approach, popular. Because you know that when everybody has a certain idea, there's no way they can be right. They might be close, but not right on the money. Remember, this is my environment here. So I'm going to talk about the fad, how fads work and what fads can be. And I'm going to talk about uh, truth. I'm going to look at facts, not, not made up information, but real information. And then we're going to look at, uh, we're going to talk about solutions. Now, Fad and truth and solutions are all ideas, but here they relate to the environment specifically. So you see our overlap here. Now I might talk about the environment. But let's say, let's say I also want to talk about uh, another topic like uh, technology. In fact, I think I want to bring them together. And I'm going to call this the overlap and the connection about how technology and the environment affect each other for better or worse. So I'll actually put it out on a paper like this and I'll look at it this way. And so I might talk about the environment. I might say uh, we've got uh, temperature is one issue and uh, we've also got precipitation like rainfall and snowfall and stuff. Precipitation. We've also got earthquakes. That's a that's an issue, and we've also got cleanliness. Um, fad pop culture. We've got a fad popular term which mislabels it, and that's a uh, global warming. It's it's not necessarily that that that's very easy to debate and make fun of. Never use terms so simple you can make fun of them. And then we've also got the idea that the fad solution that. Uh, that uh, the, the technology is bad. We need to get rid of technology and have a low quality of living. That's some people's answer, but that's not really what we want. That's not everybody's answer, but that idea is out there. And we got to look at the truth. The truth, for example, would be that we've got hot and cold extremes. The truth is that the sun is a very, 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 very big factor. It's very big. It's huge. The sun goes through magnetic changes. And that's a, that's a big, and, and I would put, uh, for example, um, well, you can do research on, on solar, uh, uh, solar magnetism, solar magnets. The sun is doing some pretty wild things. But then we've also got truth about just just cleanliness, just just dirty and uh, efficiency, and uh, we've also got supply, energy supply, and another another big one. I'm running out of room here. Cost. Oh, that's a big factor. We need to be, you know, less expensive with everything. So. 
that would I would put that. We, we want to talk about truth and facts. We don't want just a fad pop called, oh, global warming's killing everyone. Turn off your air conditioner. Ride a bicycle. It's not that simple. That, that, that could be a good idea, but it's not that simple. We don't want a fad pop culture approach. We're going we're gonna to talk about some true things. We've got solutions. Well, what could some solutions be? Uh, open source. Open source uh, li licenses rather than copyrights. You know, we need we need open open research, share ideas with people, and uh, and we've also got you know efficient, efficient, efficient is really really good. It's not just don't be wasteful. It's not recycle. Recycle is part of that. But see, we've got efficiency here. And then we've got uh, we've got recycling. Here's my little recycling logo. We got recycling. And 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 we've got we've got other things here. I'm going to draw a picture of smoke. There's my little smoke thing. And then we've also got. Uh, I'm just going to draw a picture of being able to move fast. That means something to me. See, I'm drawing out my idea and talking about it. I could look at this. Everything I have here, I could talk about for probably two or three hours. But I'm mapping it out, and it means something to me with how I wrote it. Open source efficiency, and then we've got a, a, another another issue is just to think. Can, we can? It's not impossible. Most of the time, the solutions to problems are just these astronomical, impossible things that just get us all depressed. And the only answer is to buy some company's product, and that's. That's not the answer. We can do it. It's very doable. Now, in terms of the overlap, you know what? Maybe that's the overlap. We can do it and we can have technology. Well, there we go. Now, I've just put out a nice little talk that I could give on environment and technology. Now, I could I could look at this and talk about it forever. I've got my I've got three basic ideas here. Okay, we've got the fad pop culture approach and we've got some truth of what's going on and then then we've got some solutions and, and we've got the topics of the environment and we've got technology we could talk about both of those and the overlap is that we can do it now there's my idea now how do i put this now, i i mean I, I could just write this i could just talk about this i could just if i gave a speech on this topic i would Put this in front of me. That would be my map. I might have little side scratch notes if there was a sheet I wanted to reference or suddenly think I want to read to people. I might read from it. I might not. I'll be ready for anything. I'll lay out my tools. I'll be prepared and have notes to give a 10-hour speech. And I'll pull from the things that I think are most relevant based on what I think's going on in the room and what happens to be on my mind. A lot of times when you start doing something, you start talking about it, you start writing, the important stuff comes up first. It's the people in the room or whatever. So I'm ready to look at anything, but I've written out my map and I can look at it and I can talk about it. Well, this is over there. And you know, technology and environment, they really relate to solutions. They can connect, you know. I, I, I can say that because the, and it's easy for me. I, I didn't come up with that clever statement. I'm looking at the paper in front of me. They connect on the paper in front of me. That's a way to look at this. Now, let's say that I have to put this into a five paragraph essay for a school project or I need to write an abstract on something. Well, we've got three things. We've got the culture, we've got the truth, and we've got the solution. Those could be the three things right there. Now, let's say let's say that I'm I'm not talking about the fad pop. Let's say we're just going to talk truth and solution. Well, that's only two. How do I make three paragraph essay? Well, the first paragraph could be the environment. The second paragraph could be the truth. Third paragraph could be the solution. Or I could make uh, fad pop culture the first. Either one. Or or I could make um, I could make uh, truth and solutions article or you know the first paragraph in the body, and then technology could be the third paragraph, and then 
uh, the idea that we can could be my second paragraph, or that could be third, and technology could be second. I, I could organize it any way I want. These are my basic ideas. I just have to put it into a five-paragraph essay. And then, of course, the way to write the introduction is to just sort of put it together. And, you know, that's the secret. When you've got your five-paragraph essay, you've got, you've got your introduction, your conclusion, your body. The introduction is a teaser and the conclusion is a review. That's the way to do it. The, you know, in the teaser, you might uh, ask lots of questions, maybe. Well, I'm going to look at another th way this might look. I might decide I want to talk about three stories. Steve Jobs did that one time in his speech at Stanford. I'm just going to give you three stories. That's it. Three stories. And what were they all about? They were all about, they happened to be about success. Now, I don't think that he wrote this out this way, but you could understand it that way. Success and hardship. And he had little teachable moments. Little teachable moments. Like, it didn't seem to make sense at the time. Or, like, you can't connect the dots looking forward. You just have to trust your heart. Like, he'd say things like that. Little teachable moments. He'd tell stories about how everything was good, how everything was hard. He might even also talk about his feelings. Like, I really was sad. I, I felt like I'd failed. I'd let people down. You know, you talk about you talk about feelings. Or, I was just interested. But he gave, he gave three simple stories. That's how an outline could look. Now, it started with three circles. Maybe I don't need all these boxes. Maybe I only need a few. Well, there you have it. Those are a few different ways to understand how to put all your ideas into a nice little organized fashion. I'm sure it all makes sense.